Just father, we have come once again to listen to your words. Lord, just like the choristers that lend that Lord, we need you every hour, we need you every moment. We need your help. Days are evil, Lord. Days are evil, Lord. We have promised to guide us. We have promised to be with us. We have promised to help us, Lord. Father, I pray that you help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to stay close to you. Stay close to your work. Help us, Lord, to discern the activities of the enemy. Help us, Lord, to be able to interpret the days we are in. Lord, help us to know that it is only your work that can keep us in a time which we have found ourselves. Lord, I pray that you make this message to be real unto every one of us, that you might live in the consciousness. Let the, let the reality be done on us. Let the consciousness of God, at the time we are in the God, let it be. Let, let us come to that knowledge that we might do the necessary thing, that we might follow the instructions, even the instructions of the Lord, that we might watch, Lord, the, 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 the songwriter said, Christians seek not yet repose. Cast your dream of ease away, for we are in these of fools. Lord, the testimony of the Bible is that the kingdom saw the violent and the violent taken it by force. And we rest to, not against faith and blood, but against organized kingdom of darkness. And if we are to stand there, then we must be strong in the Lord. Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord, that no man will depend upon himself. That every man will see the need to depend on you, to rely on you, so that Lord will be able to escape. And the scripture said, Are there many that are to be saved? Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The message we are bringing before you is titled Perilous Time or Perilous Days. Perilous Days. Evil Days. Dangerous Days. Fearful days, restless days. We are taking our list scripture from Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, from verse 3 to 13. Matthew 24, 3 to 13. And he reads, And as he sat upon Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Lord, tell us. When shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And he shall hear of wars, and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Take note. The end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines in and pestilences and earthquakes in dire places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations. For in their sake, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wash cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Verse number 1 to 5, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 5. This know also that in the last day, a religious time shall come. 
The men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breaker, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, hate, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power of the error, from such turn away. Perilous times, perilous days, dangerous days. Let me say something that will help you. When you hear about the last days, when you hear about the last days, perilous days, your mind will go to the end of the world. When a lot of evil, as has been spoken by the Bible, will come to be. But I want you to know that the last days began from the time that Jesus appeared. I said the last days began from the time that Jesus appeared. What is happening is that the last day is a stretch. Period. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Now, as the end of the time is coming, it begins to graduate. The evil begins to graduate, begins to graduate, begins to graduate, begins to graduate until the terminal point. Then, as for the last days, it began from the time that Jesus appeared. The end of the world really began from the time that Jesus appeared. Let me show you from the Bible. In Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, verse number 15. Mark chapter 1, verse number 15. Are you there now? Mark chapter 1, verse number 15. Are you there? Yes, sir. And saying, the time is what? Fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is what? At hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That is the first, that is the beginning of preaching of Jesus. As Jesus came, he began to say, the time is already to fear. In other words, the end of time has already come. Repent ye, therefore. And we are told in Galatians chapter, Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, look at verse number 4. To let you know that the coming of Jesus marked the beginning of end of time. He said in Galatians chapter 4, verse number 4, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of the woman, made under the law. When the fullness of time has come, the Savior appeared. And uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 10. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. The dispensation of the end of time. So, we, where we are now, we are standing at the last lap of the end of times. I don't know whether somebody is following me. Yes, sir. I said the end of time has already begun. We, we are, we are at the, at the age. We are, we are standing at the last lap of the end of time. I don't know when it's terminating. But we are at the last lap of the end of time. So when you look at what the Bible said from that time, you see that evil continue to graduate and graduate and graduate. As the time is coming and growing nearer, then the activities of the wicked one is getting more pronounced, is increasing and increasing because they know that their time is worn up. One of the days we are praying and the spirit was manifesting and said they want to finish their work quickly because they know that their time is coming. That they are at the end of their time. 
It's only you and me that do not know that we are the end of time. The end has begun and it's increasing and it's increasing and it's increasing and it's increasing. There are people that will be three days to the end of time, the recombination time. There are some people that will be one month to eat. There are some people that will be two years to eat. There are people that will be ten years to eat. But as for the end of the time, it has already begun. And as years are drawing nearer, the evil is getting what escalated. That's what I want you to understand. As for the end, we're already into it. Now, we are going to look at the message into three subheadings, if we are able. Today, if we are not, this time we continue. One, we are going to see what are these perilous days, these dangerous days. And then under it, we are going to see the mystery of iniquity. That is the thing that shows that we are already close or that the, the end of the time is very, 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 the termination point is very close. How do we know certain things that are happening? Some abominable things, certain things that, that, that we never heard of, that they are happening in our days. Things we never heard of. Things that existed in the books and imagination, but right now is with us. That tells you we are getting to the termination point. Then we're going to see the warning by the Lord. What are the warnings? What are we supposed to do as Christians, as children of God, when we see this time we are in, what should be, what manner of person ought you to be? What kind of life should you be living? What kind of life should you be living? And then we will finally see how to remain safe and remain protected and how you can be in the water and you are not soaked with the water. How you can be in the world but the world is not carrying you like wind. How you can escape the trouble that is coming upon this world. Now let's move on. What the perilous days. What are the perilous days? The perilous days means a dangerous time. And actually these days are really dangerous and risky as far as the soul in telling eternal will being is concerned. As far as our going to heaven is concerned, as far as your soul is concerned, we are living in the last day because the, the devil is making sure or is trying to see that nobody escapes his hand. You want to see if you are possible to pollute every man and make sure that nobody goes to heaven. Just like somebody said, some people boasted and said, in the next few days or in the next few years, there is not going to be anything called marriage again. The devil will bend. You will see the attack on marriage. You will see the attack on homes. You will see the rate of divorce and the things like that. Then you, you come to you, you begin to see that that will appear to be true. That they make business. That they make business. So we are concerned because these are the things that are affecting you, making you to be weak, making you to begin to think that maybe Jesus will not come, slowing you down and making you not to be serious with God and the things of God. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Paul was trying to cancel these people because already they were thinking that the coming of the Lord will be as will be in a moment in time. 
And Paul said, we are already at the, at the end of time. But the Antichrist, the man of evil, would have been revealed before we get to the combination point. Verse 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but are pleasure in unrighteousness. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit, the spirit that deceives. And doctrine of the devil. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful unholy, without natural affection, truth breaker, false accusers, incontinent, fear, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heavy minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. This is what I read now. Is it true? Is it true? It, it is here with us. He said there will be perilous times, dangerous days, for men shall be lovers of their own self. That means people will be self-centered. People will self-centered. They are after themselves. They don't want to know what is happening around them. They don't want to know what somebody, what somebody is passing through. I was discussing with a young man yesterday night, a student. One of all that's now studying overseas. He said, Pastor, I felt I should start saving some money from what I have so that I can see I can help somebody. Please check. Look at those that are desperate in the church. I want to see how I can make investment in those people. I want to put, I want to make somebody happy. Still a student, saving money. See how he can make somebody happy. So he remember the story that I told him while he was with me about Churchill. How that Churchill's father helped a young man. And that young man became a medical doctor, a scientist. And later, later in life, Churchill was in trouble. And they went around and, and they, they, they connected them to somebody. And that somebody happens to be the very boy that his father trained. He has invented a medicine. And this message was administered to Churchill, and Churchill became here, what, under four days, a prime minister. <coughs> you remember that story? But you see, today, nobody wants to know what is happening around. Everybody is on his own. People are dying around him. Nobody wants to know. That is the last day, the spirit of the last days. Yes. Covetous. People be covetous. Boosters. Proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. There was an individual, there was an individual that had a police problem and was already convicted. He was already convicted and he was to serve one year in jail. But because of concern, somebody connected us, said, if there's anything that we can do, let do it and save this individual because I've been in jail before, I've been in jail before. And we went and borrowed money to help this person pay the fine with a mind that we cannot come to God and serve God. 
Then he came out from the cell. Then he came out from the police mess. He didn't want to hear anything again. That's what that we say. That is the of the last days. This is somebody that we have been languishing in, in death. That is the speed of the last day. Unthankful, unholy. False accusers, incontinent, fear, despising of those that are good, and the rest of them. So, these are the perilous times, the dangerous times that affect the soul. The soul that gets into being a lover of self, own self, seekers of own pleasure, instead of loving God, being disobedient, high minded, high minded. High mindedness means living above your means. Living above your means. You know you don't have money for a car. You are not doing any job. You don't have any job. You don't have anything. But when you see people riding on a car, new car, you want to have it by all means. You are high minded. You go into stealing, go into ritual, go into all kinds of that high mindedness. You are living above your means. You don't have any genuine job you are doing. You don't have anything you are doing. And then you want to be in the next place here, you want to you want to you want to buy your dream. That's high mindedness. And that is the spirit that is ruling in the last days. People that are high minded. And surely is is a is they are they are serious, or rather it's a serious situation. Today, many are getting deceived and offended, resulting in their waxing cold towards God, while others are clearly falling away and running risk of being eternally damned. And some others are having itching ears, not being able to endure sound doctrine. Now, these days, because of the evil that is in the society, there is competition. You want to be like others, you want to do what other people are doing, whether you have a job or not, you want to do what they are doing, you want to be like others, you want to join, you want to join the Joan and Joneses, you want to be like every person. Then there is competition. It leads people to flaw. It leads people to internet business. You don't have a job. How can somebody go to the internet and then you say you connect the white man and then tell all sort of lies and then you are you are you are you are hacking people's uh, people's uh, account numbers and then and then and then defrauding them, taking money from them. And so many people are very happy that 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 they are making the money. I know a young man about three or four years ago who came to us and after pushing to himself, the kind of business I'm doing cannot allow me to follow you people. What are the business? Internet business. Make money. That white man, they are collecting his money. He's not a human being. And then they are pouring causes upon themselves. And somebody say, what am I suffering? You are suffering of what you have done. You are reaping what you sow. A lot of people are in trouble because causes are, they are, they are bringing causes upon themselves, upon their children, on daily basis. We are in the last days. And many will, many will have issue here. What is issue here? Don't tell me, don't tell me this. Tell me what I want to hear. Don't talk about hell here. Talk about hell. Somebody said you had to hear hell you put it these days. And you talk about hell, people will not come to church. I want to hear that. Tell us what you want to hear. That's the issue here. Tell us the thing that we want to hear and not what you want us to hear. You rebuke somebody and say, your way is not right. The next day you see him in church again. The one somewhere they are fanning him. God is good. God is good. And somebody will come to church with a girlfriend from church. They found going to go and commit immorality. The next day he comes to church. He brings money so that pastor will not be hungry. And other people, so that things will be going on. Nobody tells him that you are heading to hell. They are finding him in his favor. That's in itching ears. That's itching ears. He wants what he wants to know. Don't tell us 
Don't tell all that we should we should get married properly. Don't tell all that it's one man, one wife. Don't want to hear it. Because the pastor is saying they believe in two women. That is it. That is the problem. They will not they will not allow sound doctrine. What is sound doctrine? He said, if you consent not to the whole song way of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do what? Withdraw yourself. Whole song ways means the whole teaching of Jesus. Part of the teaching of Jesus is if your hand will make it to the do what? Chop it off. If your eyes will make it to the do what? Pluck it out. I for one reason to fear. Don't fear the person that will destroy the body, but has no power over the spirit. But fear him that after you would have destroyed your body, will cast you to hell. And the people say, the people say, who will hear this? This is a hard saying. But the sign of the last day is that people will have itching ears. They don't want to hear. Don't tell all this. We don't need it. Don't talk about the way we dress. Don't talk about worldliness. Just talk, tell us something good. Just read those scriptures that we tell us that God is good. And I'm telling you, you see the kind of preaching we are preaching? If I go to some churches today that are having mega members, if I preach there one point, their number will drop. I'm just telling you the truth. Because I'm not going to look at the face of any person who we call spare, spare. You tell a sinner you are a sinner and you are heading to hell. I'm not interested. You see, many people didn't come to church today, I'm not worried. If all these people here are really following to God be the glory. It is better for me to have hundred people that know where they are going than 10,000 people that do not know where they are going. Some, some ministers of God have, have forced us. You know why? You know that somebody is not doing right. You know that somebody's life is not going to God. They, because you are getting money from him, because of what you do, you close your eyes. You are a fraud. You are a deceiver. You are deceiving that person. I'm telling you, you have deceived that person. Tell the person the truth. If he doesn't want to bring his money, let him keep his money. And go on. So that at the end of the day, if you have 20 people that met heaven, everybody will not go to heaven. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Everybody will not do what? It is a choice. It's a choice. The, the way still remains narrow. The gate still remains narrow. The way of petition remains wide. It has not, in fact, the, the book of Isaiah said that hell enlarges itself every day because many people are coming here. So, if you are here, you are here for truth so that you run away for all the sins. Then we have itching ears. They will not want to endure sound doctrine. Now, the mystery of iniquity is already in place. What do we mean by the mystery of iniquity? The mystery of iniquity is those things that are not common. When it begins to happen, you need to close your ears. Listen to me. A man in Australia locked, locked his own daughter in a house and pregnanted her several times and raised nine children with his own very daughter. Is, 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 he not, is, he not, is he not doing this one now? Eh? These are the issue of what? Iniquity. He's right now serving a live jail. He's serving a live jail. It is now very common that men are sleeping with their own daughters. It's no more abuse. Is it abuse? No. Are you hearing it for the first time? No, sir. Are you hearing it for the first time? No, sir. Please, are you hearing it for the first time? No, sir. It's no more abuse that men are sleeping with their daughters. In fact, if here is it, is it abuse? These are the mystery of iniquity. Very common. 
is an emission of iniquity. That a woman married her own grandson and said that now she's not enjoying sex. Her own grandson. These are things that the mystery of what the meetings that, that will show you that we are in golden days. Man married a fool, a, a fellow man. And then this one will open his ear and play the wife. The other one will play the husband. Man and man. These are mysteries of iniquity. That a woman, the woman just one that I don't know whether that is the case now. And then, then I cry here. Some other identified area. But whether the woman is still being right. You know what she did? The woman that will come to her house, either to help or whatever that she doing, then she went and drove this woman. She went and drove this woman. When she drove her, nobody knew something that she used. He said it's an artificial man whatever that she used. And then I knew this other lady. She's not being tried. They have not completed the case. All kind of abominable things that they come in the area of the, 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 that is the type of evil we see now is what you have not had before. Killing, killing, go to places of war. The Bible says then we they will not have natural affection. Do you know the meaning of natural affection? Natural affection means if I pinch you, you will feel it because of a human being. And me to myself, I will feel that I am I am causing you some pain. The whereby I am pinching you and causing you pain and I don't feel it myself, then I don't have natural affection. There's one boy that they killed in arm robbery in Nigeria some years back. His name is called Anini. You know? The way they were interviewing him, he said that the thing that is making him happy is that when he shows a man and the man is jaking, jaking to that, he makes him happy. He derives joy as somebody jaking to that. Is he a human being? He doesn't have natural affection. And in some part of northern Nigeria, where there is a problem, people begin to fight, they get a pregnant woman and, and cut her open and bring the baby and kill the baby. They don't have natural affection. They are sisters of human beings. Look, when I saw one of the pictures of this book of Haram people, how they kill their members. Huh? They, that, those that betray them, my God, if you see it, they will hide the person, why you come back? Bring a stick and put his neck. You know how they kill the goods. Mm -hmm. huh? Tie him hand back and then chop off his neck. And then cut off his head and bring it out. Don't die like goods. These are, they don't have natural affection. People who plant bombs in their body and go to play, they call the house of God, go to malls or go to places and detonate it and kill themselves and kill other people. There are no more human beings. This one, as we say, there are the signs of the, we are we are at the beach. We are the beach. We are the beach. What did Sudan and the mother do? Sudan and the mother was just a community, a city. But this time, the sin of the Sudan and the has now become a world affair. There's no more Sudan and the mother. It's not a world affair. Even even developing nations, if you don't want to agree, if you do not if you do not accept their if you do not accept their 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 their, 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 their some of their some of the, 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 the things they are selling to the world, they will no longer give you help. Part of the condition is you must accept gay marriages. It is in our time that a gay is a priest, a bishop. In our own time, yes. are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the devil is no more satisfied with the world. It's not in the house of God. The devil is in the house of God. See abominable things in the house of God. 
in the hands of God, and people are doing, people are committing abortion and all kind of things. Even even the ministers of God putting people in, in, into 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 family work and aborting it. Yes, these are the abominable things that the Bible said. When it begins to happen, you know that the history of the new is already here. We are at the age. In the days of Christ, what I'm telling you now may not be happening. But the last day has started for that time. But now, it has what is collected. Now, the effect is what is most important to me and you. The effect of it is that it has slowed you down and slowed the church down. Because what you see and what you hear affects you. Whether you believe or not, what you see, what you hear, does what affects you. They call you the foolish man because you don't want to join the bandwagon. You don't want to join them in stealing and doing some wicked things. Therefore, you don't have sense. Now, what, are, what is the result? The result, in fact, Jesus said, if care is not taken, even the elect shall be what? Deceived. If the time is not shortened, the elect shall be deceived. And many people of God have thrown in power because if you cannot beat them, you will what? Join them. Many people of God that they have thrown in power, it has resulted in lack of commitment. Have you ever asked yourself, is it the same God that apostles serve and the early father serve? Is it the same God we are serving? If it is the same God, why are we not having why are we not having some of the experiences that they had? I am one of the persons that is preaching that persecution will start again in the church. Because when the when persecution comes and people are being killed, then it will filter the church. So you hear what I said? Persecution and trouble filters the church. He seeps the wheat and the chaff. Because it will no longer want it. You are, you are dying for something you do not know. Persecution brings out the genuine Christians. And those that are not genuine will fall off. This, what, what is the point taking a risk? But this time around, we don't know who is a Christian, we don't know who is not a Christian because everybody looks alike. The world is so engrossed with the church and the church with the world. So we don't know who is a Christian and who is not a Christian. But in those days, the Christian stands out. His lifestyle, his way, everything, everything is, uh, is opposite the world. Christianity and the world, they are two parallel lines that can never meet. Christianity, a Christian stands out anywhere he is, whatever he's doing. But today, no more, no, no distinction. So, the war, Satan has succeeded in, you know what he's doing? Cooling down, cooling down, cooling down, cooling down. Many Christians and many have become ice water. Many Christians have become what? Ice water. Many are even in deep freezers. Did you hear me? Many are what? In deep prisons. That's why we are struggling. That God will help us so that we come up to become real warriors, real people that God will, will want us to be. If it is like this with us, think about people that are in Orthodox churches. They go to church, they visit, they visit their baby doctors. They go to church, they wear charms and cover it and see they go to church. They go to church, they go to lady doctors, they go to church, they put charms in their pocket, and all the rest of them, are they not called Christians? Such people, what, where do I put them? I don't know where to put them. So, this mission of evil has grossly affected the house of God and the people of God and their coldness. We talk about we talk about the evangelism, and you will tell you, I don't have time. I don't have time for that. But if you look, the ways of God, you cannot understand. 
God, in his wisdom, has decided that, that if he do this gospel, he will save a man. Are you hearing me? So, if you do not disbelieve this gospel, people will be dying and suffering and going to hell. And that's why Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. For the healing is the power of God unto salvation. Solution to world's problem is tied to this gospel. Therefore, if you do not give this gospel to people, you have locked them up. You have denied them freedom. The devil knows that solution lies with the gospel. So you want to close your mouth. He wants to make you not to speak. For the Bible says, how can they believe whom they have not had? How can they hear without a preacher? How can we preach? They said we are sent. So you see the logic that the devil knows that everything is tied to this gospel. Everything is tied to this gospel. Then the devil will do everything possible to make sure that this gospel does not spread. That nobody talks about it. Let them be cold. Let them be in their houses. Let them not go out. And so long as we don't go out, so long as we remain in our houses, people, the devil will be having field day, messing up him. Sister, is it not evangelism you came to rush here and Jesus arrested you? Are you not happy? <laughs> huh? If you didn't come, maybe you will still remain here like them. Are you not happy? And I can find so many of you here. If, if this gospel we were selling, and then you got arrested. Yes. And your life changed. Yes. And everything changed. Yes. Now you cannot know your left and right. Yes. Now you cannot enjoy things that accompany salvation. What if we didn't come? What if somebody didn't talk to you? What if somebody didn't minister to you? The devil knows that the secret lies there. So wants to stop in my armies. Yes. Want to stop in my armies. And then lack of commitment. In the house of God, <laughs> nobody is ready again to make his time available. See, common rain is stopping somebody from coming to the house of God. Common rain. I went to India, and his sister travels 17 hours to come to fellowship. 17 hours to come to fellowship. Think about it. 17 hours. Another student will travel 800 kilometers to go and preach to some people and come back. And it's a medical student with all the all the causes, all the trouble. He will travel in the night, go and minister, and come back. Yes. He showed me. He showed me a place where Thomas was buried. Thomas of the Bible from Israel. Who see? They found a way in India. A minister in India and died here. And they buried him there. Where are the commitments? Where are the commitments? Where are the commitments? Nobody is available. But the Bible says they did that hazarded themselves for the cause of the gospel. It is because of the coldness that has come upon the world. Has affected the church of God and nobody, everybody is running, running a race, rat race. Everybody running a race. You can't see people that volunteer themselves and say, We will serve this God, we will die for this God, we will die for Him. You can't see people that are mad for the God again. You can't see people that are making sacrifices for God again. Rather, people will even come to the house of God and get help. They will not appreciate it. Some will even come and defraud the church. Yes, because they feel that church is where money is coming from. That's the thinking of many people. They come and play and play game. Some are made away from it. No wonder. You know my job. My job is the Bible is correct. Paul said they suffer in the hands of false brethren. People that say that they are brethren, they are false brethren. When I hear such things, it becomes what a consolation to me. He said, do not be weary in doing good. Because you can be weary. What causes the weariness? When you, when you want to, you hear people that think that they are genuine. At the end of the day, they show you their back. At the end of the day, they do some nasty things. My people say that it's only dog that cheats where they serve him food. 
It's only talk that goes to where the people that do what cheat there. People come to the house of God. There are places you don't cheat. The house of God is one of them. The people come to the house of God and cheat. If somebody come and before bread, has he not cheated in the house of God? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Now, how will that person be saved? He has blocked himself from where salvation will come from. He has locked himself, not the gate against himself. How can he be helped? Where will you get help? If you have closed the door of God against yourself, where will you get help? But these are the things we see in the house of God. But these things, they are part of the last day science, and they, 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 they make people to be weak in faith, and make people to give up, make people to throw in power, and make people to say, I'm sure this church of the team, I don't know what I mean. Nobody is free. But I want to tell you, <laughs> The number we, that we go to heaven is still few. Somebody asked Jesus a question and said, Are there a few that are to be saved? Do you know what Jesus did? He didn't answer him directly. Jesus said, Strive to do what? <laughs> Don't bother how many people that will be saved. As for the number, there are what? Few. But bother about yourself. And somebody said, if there are going to be only 20 people that will be in heaven, before you count the, before you count the last person that you must count in, that should be your decision. Are there many, are there a few that are to be saved? Strive. Fight for your life. Because it's not a game of my father and my mother. It's not a game of husband and wife. Everybody is on his own. After a lot and the wife, we are running. And the other one looked back and put a bit of salt. And the, and the race continued. Huh? The race continued. That's it. That's not for you. Not for your life. Because the things you are seeing, they are terrible. You know what we do? If you are, they said, if somebody is being drowned, I don't know how to swim. They don't want to hide. Now, if somebody is being drowned in the water, they say you will carefully stay far and be pushing him and pushing him. For if you hear him, if he grabs you, all of you will die there. Have you? That is how the heaven race is. Keep pushing somebody, keep helping him. If you want to pull you down, do what? Move. Move. Because you have a business of saving yourself first. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Your number one business to do what? Save yourself first. So, if you are struggling to save somebody and that person said, I won't be saved, I must perish, do what? Begin like what? Continue running. I am being very serious. I am being very serious. That is the question you take. Run for your life. Because there are people that have made covenant with Satan. Mm -hmm. They have already do whatever you want to do. My pastor preached that said, if somebody will go to hell at the end of the day, why not go now, now, now? Why, why wasting time? Why disturbing people? See this what the pastor said. If somebody will eventually perish, why you go back the land? Why not go now, now, now? So there are people who try everything they want to do, they will not agree because they have made covenant with Satan and they want to they want to perish. So the mystery of iniquity is such that it has affected the house of God and many people are after what we get from church and not what we need to in. If everybody is looking for what we gain, how will church grow? Church grows by sacrifice. Jesus said, He said, the corn of wheat falling from the ground will abide the load. The way they falls on the ground, that is the only time it can now spread. So it has to die. Death begets life. Christianity is a sacrificial, it's a, it, it, it's, Christianity is for our sacrifice. For God so loved the world that He did what? Him. That's why we are here. If Jesus did not come, if Jesus did not sacrifice his life, we will not be saved. 
And he said, this is how we perceive the love of God. That our God died for us. Then we ought to lay that our life for our brethren. So when Christianity ceases from sacrifices, and it is now, what are we get? What are we get? What are we get? Me and my children, me and my family. Then the power of the gospel will be, will be lost. That's why in many places, you don't see God moving. Because everybody is after what we gain. Now, the Lord says, the warning by the Lord. The warning by the Lord. The Lord is, the Lord is warning us to take heed in regard to these days as the, as the unwilly will be swayed on our ways. Jesus asked, when the Son of Man shall he find faith, shall he find people on the, on the course serving the Lord? With all they are and all they have, shall I find people committed earnestly contending for the faith? Shall he find people remaining in the Lord in the faith? Righteousness? Shall he find those who have not been confused and deceived? Those who are standing without being discouraged? Shall he find you in faith? That's what the Lord said. Shall he find you in faith? That is the one of the, the Lord. The Lord said, be be, be, take heed, take heed, be, be careful, be careful, that is not take heed, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful, for if you do not take heed, then we will hear a story about you, and that will be a bad story, take heed, take heed, take heed, like, I'm going to, I want to spend some time in the last point, because it is most important to how we keep ourselves. We have seen that the days are evil. We have seen the days of the evil. The question is, how do we keep ourselves? The Lord said, let us be warned. Let's see in Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, take heed, take heed, take heed means be warned, be warned, be careful, be careful, take heed, take heed. If you are going in a dangerous place at the same take heed, if they are going to a place where there is high tension cable, they say they will put they will put a code of spear and then put danger. They put a score of score and put danger. If you don't want to take heed and move ahead, what will happen? You will be electrocuted. I mean, even people that are living in high tension, even people that are living in a world that are called with high tension, they will government will force you to put danger there. But if you didn't put it on somebody that you go responsible. Yes. Anything, anything. Look, when 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 my pastor described about this taking me, I became afraid. He said, You see this uh, this machine they use in cutting iron and cutting wood. It has little pipes. You know, it turns round. It revolves several, several hundreds or thousands times in a minute. I mean, this this welding machine, either they use for cutting or cutting wood. There are different types of it. There are some one, there are some that are too far that it can revolve hundreds or thousands of times in a minute. Then, he said he went to woodwork. There are some who call Gordon pin. Gordon pin is like safety pin. That any, before you put that machine on, you must put the Gordon pin so that it cannot escape, it cannot move. The reason is because that thing that revolves, if it comes out and flies, it will break you into two. And it has happened to people. In factories, huh? they, didn't, they didn't take heat, they didn't put presumption, they didn't put the safety pin, and they didn't free. Call the person to take because the revolving is so much. Take heat, that's what we are, we are being told. You see, danger, danger, high tension level. You know, this high tension, that's what we call, that's what I, at the first, at the first thousand, at the first thousand, to the year. Therefore, at the first thousand, they bring it down to 11,000. 
came from 11,000, they bring it down to the one you are using in your house. The one you are using in the house, you know it can chuck you too, it can kill. Eh? But the power has so much been what? Reduced. Now, if you get in contact with 33,000 kVA, you will be roasted like a, like a stockfish. Even 11,000 will roast you like stockfish, not to talk of 33,000. So, that's why it's very high. The normal house is to go across it. Because if it, if it falls and falls on a house, all the people there will die. Go and check. Anywhere you see high tension, they don't allow me to do it under it. Are you hearing me? Because it is false. Eh? The power may be coming from over 300 kilometers away. So the people will not know that something has happened before they will pay it again. It is, it is cable that, that takes the, the, the energy from one part of the country to another part of the country. They travel hundreds of kilometers. So they don't do it on that. Take me, take me. They say you don't hear anything. You can build on that. Then it happens. Before you know the fourth government will know that something happened, you go to go and grab their own life. So people refuse to take heed. Because they refuse to take heed, they die in their numbers. Jesus said, let's see some of the warnings of the Lord. In Luke, uh, Luke chapter 21, from verse 34, Luke 21, 34, he says there, and take heed to yourself, lest at any time you are hard be overtired with what? Sophieting and drunken men, and what again? Hears of this life. And so that that day come upon you on our ways. Cares of this life. You worry, you bother, you pursue this and pursue that to the detriment of your soul. Then the day will come upon you on our ways. For as a snake shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Watch therefore, pray always, that you may be, you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come upon it, that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. And in the day, and, and in the day, and they were teaching in the temple. And the night he went out and abode in the mount, that is, that is called the Mount of Holy. Those who are of Jesus, they are in red. And Jesus said, all his word will surely come to pass. Do you think that Jesus meant all he said? Yes, Do you think he meant all he said? Yes, we saw him in the foundation teacher and saw that he's the one that knows what happens after his life. Therefore he said, take heed, take heed, so that that day will not come upon you unaware as a result of cares and worries. And then that day will meet you unaware. In Romans chapter 13, Romans chapter 13. So it will surely come upon some people who are not careful, who are not watching, who are not praying. Then that day will come upon them unaware. In Romans chapter chapter 13, 11 to 14. Romans 13, 11 to 14. And that knowing the time, and knowing the time, what is the time? We are the last days. That now is the high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is past day. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast out the walls of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife, not in envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. If you feel the Lord here. Make no word. Make no word. In other words, do not allow the flesh to have its way. Because if you do that, the flesh will have its way, and then you may be found wanting. In Jude, verse 3, Jude is the last book before Revelation. Jude, verse 3. Look at what we are told to do. 
in Jude verse 3. He says there, Beloved, when I came all diligent to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was one delivered unto you. Contending. Can you see fighting here? Can you see fighting here? You fight to keep your faith in the day, in the night. That you earnestly contend, earnestly make effort and contend for your salvation. Otherwise, you will lose it. Earnestly contend for the faith which you have received. Because we are the last days. So the Lord is saying, if he comes into the world, when Jesus comes, will he find you in faith? Will he find you a backslider? Will you find you as somebody that has thrown him forward? If Jesus comes, will he find you in faith? Or will you be among the people that the wind has carried? So if you will remain in faith, if you must be rapturable, if you must go with the Lord, then there is a way to be there. That way is what we are trying to give to you. The, the victorious will take him as enjoined by the Lord. Anyone who wants to found, anyone who wants to be found by the Lord in faith, on course, in righteousness, in holiness, commitment, acceptable service, even at such time that person must, as a matter of must, number one, start in the ways and through the old path where the good way is found. Listen to me. Long, long ago, around 1982, I listened to a message preached by one man of God. He said, it's better to push you and push you and push you into heaven and they paint you and paint you and paint you into hell. Go for go for the for the for the iron. If there's anything like iron, go for it to the word of God. Don't stay at the refer. Don't say, don't say, just give me, give me, give me milk. I don't mean, I don't mean milk. I need what? Iron. Not even gold. If if there's anything like overhold, the word overhold. It's better for you to be on the safe side. That's what Jeremiah said. He said, go and stand by the junction road and say, let me be the old part. Some songs say, give us old time religion. It's good and enough for us. Give us old time religion. Don't go for modern things. Modern things where the cross has been removed. Where sacrifice have been removed. I am telling you, go for where you will hear the hardest truth. It is better for you to be on the safe side. If you get to heaven, let them say we are overgoing. Did they hear me? Let them say we are what? Overgoing. Yes. If you go and write the exam and then they need a credit to be hard decision, is it not better for you? <laughs> they, they are asking for credit that you, you give them decision. You have moved from, from, from margin of safety. <laughs> you have moved from margin of safety. It's better for you. So that's the Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 6, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. said, Go to the old way, stand there, and say, We are in the right way and walk in the area. And the people say, We will not walk into it. Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the, in the way, see and ask for the cold path, where is the good way, and walk the earth, and it shall find rest for the soul. But, they said, we will not walk the earth. You don't know your response. You don't know your response. If I were you, my response would be, God, I will walk in the right way. The second point is, take time to consider your ways. Take time to consider your way. If you are a Christian, listen to me. 
You are a Christian and you don't take stock. You know what meaning of stock taking? Yes. Huh? Yes, you check their goods and know whether some thieves, whether your servants are stealing from you. Because you may be selling and rejoicing that I'm selling, but you don't know that money is going from back, back door. Now, until you take a stock, then you now know the true position of what, how things are going. Then you can now, you can now, you need to serve you as an alert. Are you hearing me? Yes, stock taking serve you as what? Alert. To know that there is danger. <laughs> you may be, you are earning money, and you are spending money. You know, business name. Come to the shop and tell, tell your boy, how much do you have in the job? And how many things? Can you give me 50 cents in the job? Give me 50 cents, put it at the back pocket. No record though. Huh? Tomorrow again, uh, how much do you have here? 200 cents, give me, give me 100 at the back pocket. No record though. The next day, how much there? 500, can you give me 200? You are collecting money. Before the month, month ends, you may have collected 2,000 without knowing it. And the day you take stock, say, ah, ah. Maybe some thief came here and stole some money. Maybe you are the people. <laughs> <laughs> you are the one that has been taking your money without knowing it. But if you do periodic checking, it will give you a true position. As it is in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. God expects you from time to time to go for personal retreat. Don't be over busy. Our hymn number one is seven said, said obedience brings blessing. Don't wait, don't wait, don't allow God to slow you down. You want to get your attention. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Eh? Sometimes you do what you take personal retreat. Tell your, tell your husband. Tell your husband, please, I want to spend two days with God. Tell your wife. Because that's what Bible said. Bible said, separate your bed. That's not separating your bed. Go and seek the face of God so that God can speak to you. But when you are too busy, I'm too busy. You don't have time from morning till night. No time, no time, no time. You are very busy and you will not know that something is going wrong. I want to show you in the Bible, Hosea chapter 7. Don't be like, don't be like Ephraim. You need to really be check it. You need to check yourself. You need to go check yourself and take a stock. I know whether you are still standing or whether some, some, some gray hair is now, is now all over you. Hosea chapter 7. Look at verse 9 there. Hosea chapter 7. I take it 8 and 9. He said, Ephraim, have mixed himself among people. Ephraim is a cake, not torn. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Yea, gray hair are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth not. Did you see it? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Can you imagine me now? Somebody said, Pastor, you have gray hair now. Say, ah, there's yeah, nothing like that. I don't have anyone. You know that something is, you know that I should be taken to a psychiatric hospital. I mean, <laughs> because it's all over my body now. Is it not true? He said, if the gray hair are here and there, and you didn't observe it. So he wasn't checking himself. He didn't know what is happening around him. So it can happen to any person. The Bible said, examine yourself and know whether you are still in faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, he said, examine yourself. So if you are going to escape this tsunami of the last day, you must be doing periodic examination. Set aside time to be with God and let the Lord show you how you are, whether some gray hair has come without you knowing it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, Examine yourself, whether you be in faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own self. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be what? Reprobate. Yes. Somebody can be a reprobate. When, you, again, when God is giving you up, you do those things that, that are not normal and you don't feel it. So as a Christian, you do a periodic check-in 
take time, fasting and prayers, one day, two days, for self-examination, and know whether something has happened without you knowing it. It is, you had our sister said she took night vision and went before God, and God revealed things to the uh, That was what happened to David. David was saying, ah, I have served God in vain. I have washed my hand in vain. I have followed God in vain. Look at the wicked people. They are prospering. Nothing is happening to them. Everything is going on well with them. They don't have any problem. Things are going well with them. Have, have I not followed God in vain? And was the greater and the greater? On the, we went to the sanctuary of God. On the, we went to the house of God. And God opened his eyes to see the end of the wicked. He now began to repent. So it can happen to you. The enemy may have come like a flaw. I'm telling you, everybody has gotten married. You are not married. You are not building the house. You are not getting this one. You are not getting this one. And they begin to suggest one thing to you. And you are, you are mourning. You are mourning. You are crying. You are saying, am I not finished? Am I not finished? What is this life all about? Is it not better to come commit suicide? And this and this and that. You are thinking of what to do. Am I not? Is it not better to join them? If you cannot be them, is it not better to join them? And you are contemplating with this thought. That when you come to God, like we are starting tomorrow, three days fasting and prayer, and we are going to show you things that are standing, and why those things are standing. And, okay, I can now see. We are going to see the things. That is the fight we are talking about. That is the way a Christian lives. To search yourself. To take time. To examine yourself. To know whether it is all well with you or whether something has gone wrong. Look at Psalm 1 at 9. Verse 23 and 24. Then he said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Look, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. If you don't go on personal searching and personal retreat and asking God to help you, show you the state of your heart, I'm telling you, you may not know that you are already in trouble. You must consciously. Go before God, ask Him to help you, to examine you, to search you, in all sincerity, because it's not in the hand of man to direct you. If you are making this kind of prayer, then you will be, you will be, you will be, you will be on a lot. The days will not take you on a ways. But, if you don't take this talk, then you might run into a problem. Now, resolve not to lose out, not to be discouraged on the way. Make up your mind, like I said, if there are going to be one million people in heaven, tell yourself that 999,909. You want to do what? You want to come. Don't be discouraged. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, don't be discouraged. Be determined to remain fighting through to the end. Remain fighting, contending for the faith. Remain fighting. And he said in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. He says there, yeah, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. We are unto that accord. And has professed a good profession. Before many witnesses, you are witness to people. You are witness to unbelievers. You are told people that are going to heaven. Therefore, no matter whatever they come your way, keep fighting. Keep fighting. Don't throw it away. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Tell yourself, I will not give up until I have crossed over to the other land. Let that be your determination. Let that be your determination. Even if they slay me, I will still serve him. No matter the situation, no matter the economic depression, no matter the lack, even if I should be slain, I will go on to me. Let me tell you the prayer I was praying when I was the new combat. I don't pray that kind of prayer now. Because I've found I have known to better things. Yeah? I will pray and say, God, if I will not go to heaven, yeah? let me be 
blind. Let me be, let me be careful. Let me stay one place. Let me just be here until you call me home so that I'll be sure I'm going to help. But I'm not going to pray again. I'm not going to be blind. I'm not going to be paralyzed. Are you hearing me? Yes, I will serve this God. Eh? All I need to do is to do what? To be watchful. Avoid sin. And don't give heed. And stick to the truth of the Bible. Blindness is not for me. Paralysis is not for me. Standing on the ground is not for me. I will serve this God. And after I serve him, if you ask me the way I want to die, eh? I will prefer after I have preached. After I have served God. <laughs> Maybe I want to eat my food and then from there I go home. That's all. God is back to all. So, that the day I want to I should pray for you, I don't pray that people can do. All you need to do is to seek the word of take heed. Be careful. Be watchful. That's all. The next is what? Watch. Jesus said, I'm praying so that they fall not into temptation. And there was a time we took that word, watch, W-A-D-C-H. And W stands for watch your words. I have discovered that many people will run into trouble because of their words, their tongue. They know their tongue. They said that Mr. Fish wouldn't have been caught if not that he opened his mouth. Be fast to hear, be slow to speak. For the many things we do offend. Watch your words. If I put that to the sister to say, you are snared, you are trapped by the words of your mouth. In fact, anybody that cannot control his word cannot control his body. Words you speak. Watch your attitude. Watch your action. Your attitude your action. What your attitude towards people around you, what your actions towards people around you, you are watching. Watch your words, watch your action, watch your thoughts. Watch your thought. For say keep your hand with all diligence. For out of for 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 for, for out of it proceed all the issues of Life. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. What's your thought? What's your thought? For your thought controls you. Your life is a reflection of your thought. Your life is a reflection of the way you've been thinking. What's your thought? What's your thought? What you are thinking? Anything that is outside God, outside the word of God, drop it. What's your word? What's your, 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 your thought? What's your tongue? What's your attitude? Watch your character. Watch your character. <laughs> your character is what tells us who you are. Yes. Your character. Watch your character. What kind of character do you have? Is it a safety character? Nobody wants to stay near you. Nobody wants to interact with you. Nobody wants to have anything to do with you. But your character is, is, is repulsive. <laughs> your character is repulsive. Nobody wants to hear you. Nobody wants to have anything to do with you. Are you a friendly person? Do you have a, do you have a wisdom personality? A wisdom personality is somebody that people want to stay around. They feel happy when they are, when they are in your company. You, you, you motivate people. You make people feel happy. You make people feel belonging. What kind of a character do you have? Think about it. And then wash your habits. Hmm. Wash your habits. Your habit is what you do on daily basis. We form good habits, we form bad habits. Habit is a way of life that is cultivated over a time. Wash it. What kind of habit do you have? Is it a habit that makes you not to know God? There are some good habits you must cultivate. There are something that God is doing for me that I'm very happy about. It's a habit. I cultivate it. You wake up as early as two. One, two, three. You don't like it. You don't like it? Okay. Let it be for me alone. Huh? Let it be for me alone. That by, by two, three, you're already awake. Huh? You don't like it? If you know, if you know the joy of walking in the night. Many great men they walk in the night. No noise, no disturbance, quietness, and everything. 
Before people are waking from bed, they have gone very far for the day. Before people are waking from the, before people are waking from their bed, their bed, they have gone really very far. That's why Jesus will pray all the night. He will separate himself and go. All many great men will walk better in the night. So it's a good habit. Form the habit of reading your Bible. Huh? Eat it. Eat it like food. So that the word of Christ will dwell in you so richly. For the habit of being hospitalable. Hospitalable, if I said word like that. Because the Bible said, in so doing, you impartate angels on our way. You know, angels visit. Angels visit, they walk around this road. They go to people who don't know it's an angel. Like I told you, Jesus comes to your house. Jesus visits you on a regular basis, but you don't know because he comes in the form of a brother that is in trouble. Has it? So he said we should not be willing in doing good. We should be hospitable because in so doing, many have entertained angels on our ways. Form the habit. Form the habit of being appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus said, we are there not ten people healed. Why is it that only one person came to say thank you? Is God eating thank you? Of course he eats it. Because that's the thing that made Israel to waste away in the desert. They said, we remember Kumba. We remember onions. We remember this and this and that. How we wish we died in, in Egypt. And God says, okay. So all these things that I did, now ocean stand like a wall. You could go past. You don't mean anything to me. Eh? And all the family buried somebody. You people were free. You don't mean anything to you. And this other side of the of, of the country, black darkness, and your side, no, nothing. You don't mean anything to you. All you that have seen that saw these ten miracles that I did and have tempted me these ten times, you will not enter that hell. You will not enter that my promised land. I mostly beg them, beg them, beg them. They say, okay, I don't do it. I don't do it. Uh, but from 20 years, hmm, they, will, they have despised it good in our to give them, so they won't enter it. They didn't enter. It was only Joshua and Caleb that was among the old, 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 old generation that did what enter them. Go and get trash, man. Huh? Go and force yourself. Then you know that he's gone. Lack of appreciation. It makes me to backslide and backslide quick. So, watch the prayer for you. Attend night beaches. Attend these programs. We are strutting out. You cannot be in this church and you are lagging behind. Did you hear me? This is not a place where people are joking. No, no, I can't do what I'm doing and come here and joke. Any day, any day, any day it comes to joking them, either they will transfer me or then I will go home. And I don't have time for it. This thing, for more than six years, we have followed. No going and coming back. <laughs> I have not gone back to now return back again. Now one race will continue running until we cross over. That is my that's my wish, that's my prayer. I don't care. Who's, I don't care who's looking at me. I don't care who agrees with me. For me, I will not end this phrase except I enter heaven. As I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. I'm being watchful. But nobody is removed from falling away. There are so many great men of God that are past leaders and lost and lost out. If anybody fails to take heed, it can happen to that person. To stand up and let us pray. When the last day is, when the previous time, this kind of thing, you don't have it always. So, speak to yourself. You see, today is a good text. Many are not in the house of God because of convenience. Because of convenience. If, they, if, if somebody should tell them what we have today, they would have wished they came, came under the rain to come and hear what God is doing and doing us today. 
So we give hands to talk to God. We give hands to talk to God, brother, sister. When the Lord comes, we we'll find him in faith. Sister, we we'll find him in faith. Brother, we we'll find him in faith. When the Lord comes, we we'll find him in faith. Will you be standing? 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 We are living in a dangerous time. We are living in a dangerous time. We are living in a dangerous time. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. That will be in heaven. Make up your mind. Come what me. That will stop this God. Come what me. Come rain. Come sun. Come rain. Come sun. Make up your mind. Come rain. Come sun. Conrad Conson, Conrad Conson, Conrad Conson, that will serve his God. Conrad Conson, Conrad Conson, no circumstance, no circumstance, no circumstance, no circumstance, brother, no circumstance, sister, no circumstance. Tell yourself that you will not be all with that Christian. Tell yourself that you will not be all with that Christian. When you reign, you will not come to the house of God. Tell yourself that nothing will stop you from following. No matter whatever it may be. Come what may, come what may. Others may, but you cannot. That is God is God. Follow him. Make up your mind to follow him. Follow him, brother. Follow him. Sister, follow him. Don't throw him power. Don't throw him power. I don't know the challenges you are going through. I don't know what is coming your way. I don't know what is coming your way. Make up your mind. 